What's up guys, Myron Gaines here, gonna to talk to you guys today about fasting. I know you've heard a lot of things about it. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys what the science says. We're gonna take an objective look at it. All right, so what is fasting? Fasting, guys, is basically a prolonged period where you're not consuming any calories. D typically, it's deliberately, whether it's for five hours, eight hours, seven hours, 10 hours, 16 hours, whatever it may be, it is you deliberately not consuming calories for a prolonged period of time for some kind of purpose, whether it's religious, health-wise, fitness-wise, etc., cult-wise, <laughs> it doesn't matter, but that's what fasting is. Okay, so guys, with intermittent fasting, when it comes to building muscle or being anabolic or increasing hypertrophy, you can definitely build muscle while doing intermittent fasting. It's just gonna be a little bit tougher because the studies basically show that Anabolic signaling is strongest when you're taking somewhere between three to five meals per day that are protein rich equally spaced apart. So with intermittent fasting, the problem lies wherein if you're, especially if you're eating in a small window, let's say five, four hours, uh, six hours, it's gonna be tough for you to get those meals all in during that eating window. So we know that anabolic signaling is strongest when the meals are spread throughout during the day. So that's where you're gonna have your biggest obstacle, okay? Now I know I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of questions about this. Does intermittent fasting lead to more anabolism from human growth hormone? And the reality is, guys, is HGH, contrary to popular belief, is not anabolic, okay? Yes, I said that right. It is not anabolic. And most of the times, that HGH response is an acute response to you putting your body under stress from not eating. Let's make no mistake, guys. There's nothing anabolic about not eating. You know, and think of it from a logical standpoint. There's a reason why every Muslim bodybuilder dreads Ramadan, okay? Because they're about to lose all their gains, bro. <laughs> like, that's just the reality. You know, if fasting was so anabolic, like everyone says, then we'd be running around with people that don't eat in fucking third world countries with jack, bro. And that's just not how it is. So there's nothing anabolic about not eating, guys. That's really what it is. Now, am I saying that you can't make fantastic muscle gains fasting diet? No, but what I am saying is that you're giving yourself a handicap. So, the real reason you guys are here, does it help with fat loss? Well, we're gonna get into that right now. All right, so you guys are probably wondering, does fasting burn more fat? To display that, I'm showing you guys this awesome drawing, okay? So as you guys can see, we have the fat loss cat, and we have all these knives, okay? Because there's many ways to skin a cat. We're gonna go through each one, okay? So, just a quick little run. Keto, obviously, no carbohydrate. IF stands for intermittent fasting, which is, you know, your time restricting your feeding. IIFYM is flexible dieting if it fits your macros, where you're basically eating any types of foods as long as it hits your macronutrient targets for the day. Paleo, which, if it didn't exist when fucking mammoths were around, you can't eat it. Uh, vegan, and um, for the hippies, and insert new fad diet here. Just kidding, vegans, don't get mad at me, okay? I actually did a vegan diet for a bit. So, with that said guys, the bottom line with any fat loss diet is a calorie deficit, okay? That is the bottom line, hence why it's underneath this line. <laughs> so, there's many ways to get to this calorie deficit, okay? Now, with the studies and all the, uh, all the evidence, what it comes down to guys is calories in versus calories out when it comes to fat loss, okay? So, if you need to put yourself in a calorie deficit through keto, or intermittent fasting or flexible dieting, if you equate calories and protein, the two most important factors when it comes to fat loss, because protein has a high thermic effect, which means it burns a lot of calories just to process it, uh, versus overall calories, these are the two things that are most, uh, these are the two things that are most important when it comes to your fat loss diet, okay? So how you get there is up to you, okay? However you wanna skin this cat up, is completely up to you based on your preference. There is no best diet, guys. The best diet is just what is best that you can adhere to. All right, autophagy. This is like the buzzword that all the intermittent fasting people use nowadays. Is it really as cool as they say it is? Well, what the fuck is autophagy? According to Google, it is the natural regulated mechanism of the cell that removes unnecessary or dysfunctional components. So, the reality, guys, is autophagy occurs just from dieting and putting yourself in a calorie restriction with exercise, okay? Intermittent fasting doesn't do anything special to regulate or increase autophagy. That's just a byproduct of getting, you're putting yourself in a calorie deficit, getting healthier, and exercising. 
okay? You can do that with a traditional calorie restriction. You don't necessarily need to fast to get that benefit, okay? So don't let, don't let these uh, YouTubers and other fitness influencers fool you, okay? You can get virtually all the same benefits from, uh, from autophagy just by calorie restriction. And that brings me to another point, guys. Intermittent fasting is a tool, okay, to put yourself in a calorie deficit. It, it's not superior to traditional calorie restriction in any way. And there's a bunch of studies that show that, which we're going to link in the bottom for you guys, okay? And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this channel, okay, for more science-based uh, videos like this. But the point is, is that the most important thing when it comes to any diet, as you guys saw in my fat loss video, is adherence and sticking to it. If intermittent fasting allows you to stay in a calorie deficit, then that is the best diet for you. And that's not to knock intermittent fasting, there's definitely some positives such as helping suppress hunger, because there's, there are a couple studies that actually show that when you regulate your eating to a window, it actually helps suppress hunger and makes people more adherent to their calorie restriction that they're practicing to try to lose weight. So in that regards, it's a fantastic way to regulate your caloric intake, kind of on a automated level where you don't necessarily have to think about it as much versus traditional calorie restriction you're tracking your calories you're making sure you're not eating in a calorie surplus for the day but if you're just fasting all day it's much easier to condense all those calories into to a couple meals a day in that time window and it'll help you suppress your hunger throughout the day so you can better adhere and remember guys there is no best diet it's whatever diet is best for you don't forget to like comment subscribe share this video studies will be down below because we don't like to BS any of our stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next one.